very welcome to MW Hire here in a wet and miserable Port Leash as Greg Cullen and Court would do battle in the third of the Leash Shopping Centre Senior Football Championship quarter finals. I'm Tomás Moore, I'm delighted to be joined by Arliss Kilcruz, attacker David Conway. David, you're very welcome, it's miserable out here today. Big difference towards your match yesterday, Arliss Kilcruz back into a final. Um, nice to be in that position now against the Heat on Friday week. Yeah, it's great to be back, uh, back in the Moore Park. It's the first time we've played in it in three, three years since losing the semi-final relegation to Trabley. So, um, yeah, it was a good battle yesterday. Conditions, the ground was was a little slippy yesterday, even though there was no rain yesterday from the rain that was there on Friday. So, I'd say today it'll be it'll be very dodgy underfoot. Um, yeah, so, absolutely. You know, players will have to be watching for skidding ball off breaks and, you know, a ball that's played to the half-hour line could very easily hit the full forward line very quickly. So... Yeah, we've had a huge downpour of rain here in Port Leash all morning and all during the day, but thankfully the rain has stopped here at the moment as both teams are going through their uh, warm-ups. We'll start with Greg Cullen, um, David. I read an interview by their manager, Kevin Doog, in the local media during the week, and he basically said if they don't win a championship, it's a failure. Would you agree? Yeah, well, that's that's Greg Cullen's mentality, you know, and I know it's a long, long time since they were they finally got to the top table, but like that's that's always been their mentality, and sure, like if you look at the amount of players in their in their squad and team that uh, are are on the county panel, you know, um, there's no reason why they shouldn't think that way, you know. Yeah, and they had wins over Clonesley, the bit beat Strabley quite con convincingly in the last day as well and uh, they're coming up against a court with side that they last played in championship action in 2007 I met it when both teams were in the intermediate championship but Courtwood's second year in a quarter final they'll also be looking to make the step up oh absolutely like Courtwood when they came back up from intermediate there a few years ago you know they had a young vibrant they were absolutely flying they actually bet us in a relegation final in um, three years ago you know when to be honest, they had a, they were dogged with injury that year, and you know it, it took a bit of wind out of their sails. And you know last year they came back to a certain level, but you know they have there's loads of football in them. Today I'd say you know what I mean. Gray Cullen are very compact in defence, you know, so it's it's very important I think that Court would get ahead in the first ten minutes. Greg are very good if they're front runners, if they're ahead, they, they compact the defence and and they break out from there, you know. So if if Court can get ahead. We'll then see, you know what I mean, if Greg might panic a little bit, might have to change their style a little bit, but if Greg Cullen get ahead in the game, you can see them sucking the life out of court in a lot of ways and, and breaking on, on the counter-attack constantly throughout the game. Yeah, absolutely. You see, referee John Flynn blowing the whistle. The teams are getting into their respective huddles. We'll go through the teams and we will go through with Greg Cullen first. We haven't been notified of any changes, but... We will see as the game starts. If it's by programme, the team is as follows in goals. It's Danny Bulger, full back line number two, Sean McGrath, three, Trevor Collins, four, Owen Aylesbury. Half back line, Luke Aylesbury, Mark Timmons and Danny Aylesbury. Midfield is Jamie Sheen, partnered by Shane O'Neill. And half forward line, Danny O'Reilly, Lee Walker. Of course, a, a fine transfer, bit of business to med with him and he's going to be crucial for them today. He's also with Jack Byrne on the half forward line. Full forward line then is Connor Kelly, Aaron Forbes and... Brian Byrne. There's been a number of changes for the court with three from the, the match programme. Barry Donnelly's going to wear 24. He replaces number 12 David Duffy. Barry Donnelly will more than likely go back into the defence. And then there's also Danny Lutcher and number 17 Colin Winson are also starting instead of Michael Doyle and Dylan Keane. So the court with team, Matthew Byrne, Robbie Flynn, Mark O'Halloran, Adam O'Halloran, Sean O'Flynn, Niall, o Niall Dunher, Connor Hogan, Robert Hill, Collins Uguchuku, Paul O'Flynn, Niall Dunn, Barry Donnelly, Keane Dial, Danny Lutcher, and number 17 then is Colm Wilson. Um, told now in the Greg Cullen team that Martin Dial is actually starting instead of number 7, Danny Aylesbury, and the game is off and quarter they're on the attack straight away through their number 11 number level is Niall Dunn of course the referee as I said is John Flynn from the Rock and Courthood as David has alluded already they need a good start and they're on the march Barry Donnelly's over there on the, the terrace side of the field gives it Colin Wilson now he plays as a wing back but got a number of couple of good scores in the championship so far he has two points to his name Eddie Kinsley and Fergal Byrne down there will be looking for him to contribute a little bit more here today but Sean O'Flynn has given the ball away he's given that ball away to Luke Aylesbury Greg Cullen defender gives it back to Trevor Collins and Trevor Collins plays it out over the terrace and Greg Cullen have possession and have plenty of grass in front of him David a chance probably missed maybe for Court to get off the scoreboard there yeah it looked like they should have probably hit the inside line there alright but just the movement they ran to the opposite corner so yeah as we said we wanted them to get a good start 
to, to set themselves up, but they gave away a little, little bit of a silly ball there. So, as you can see, they're trying to funnel every. There's only nobody really inside the 45. Niall Donner is held up, but the rest of them are all compact in the defence. So, it'll be interesting. It'll probably be, if you see the changes, Colin Winston um, coming in, they're probably going to try and compact the, their own 45 and see whether Greg Cullen can break them down. Yeah, Greg Cullen now have a free, a free on the 45 yard line. Referee John Flynn tried to give advantage, advantage wasn't there and Danny Bulger the goalkeeper is coming up and he has three points to his name already David it's a fine bit of arsenal to have in your weaponry when you're looking for scores as well to have a kicker like that it is absolutely because generally with teams you know uh, you look to stop teams 50 yards out you know don't give away a free but when you're playing against Ray Cullen then it's basically you can't foul inside of 55 yards because Danny Bulger is well capable of kicking any of these over the bar so Bulger sets back he, the wind is in his favour and he steps up and looks to be the first score of the game he's looking for and the umpires give their seal of approval and Greg Cullen are off the mark and it's the goalkeeper Danny Bulger who from a free I make that his fourth score in the championship based on distance there Tomas I think maybe inside the 60 they can't give away a free the way he kicked that with yeah. such <laughs> leisure Matthew Byron with the, the kick out and he got away with that it looked like Danny O'Reilly got the hand to it but quarter they're able to get possession back through Robert Hill where Robert Hill gave a pass back to Robbie Flynn and Lee Walker fouled and says the referee John Flynn and quarter are back on the attack straight away through Matthew Byron Connor Kelly is trying to cut out a bit of space but Byron is still going now Byron gives it to Collins Ukuchuku to Sean O'Flynn Sean O'Flynn with a hand pass to Robert Hill Robert Hill now faces up against Jamie Sheen they're looking to get past the halfway mark through Connor Hogan Connor Hogan here to Luttrell Luttrell starts this championship game he a bit of an injury earlier on in the championship, but he's back for Courtwood today. And Courtwood have mixed Conor Hogan, tried to give a pass to Colin Wilson and hit the back of Colin Wilson's head. And Greg Cullen come away through Aaron Forbes. Forbes with a big ball into Lee Walker. Walker's in around the house. Oh, looked like he was going to get it. It just skidded off his boot, but he still has possession. He's been held up by Robbie Flynn. Walker with a right, right foot, a pass across the, the centre of the goals to the number 12 is Jack Byrne. And Jack Byrne wasteful. Looked like if it was a dry day, David, Lee, Lee Walker could have been in there. Yeah, he actually, he, he, he kind of, the cornerback misread it a little bit, but, you know, it just, it drifted out now for a 45, and normally you go, okay, this is a 40-60, a, a but it's Danny Bulger jogging up the field again, so it's probably an 80-20 that it's going to be a score. Yeah, so three and a half minutes gone here in MW Higher on Moore Park, Greg Cullen lead, one point to no score, Danny Bulger from the 45-yard line with a free, and now he will have a chance to put a second one from the 45. Kevin Duke looking down, he's the manager, Greg Cullen giving instructions, so he's other parts of his management team while Eddie Kinsler to my left is comprehensive enough upsets Bulger Bulger with a strike and he's, he's on fire and that's what you want yeah quarter were very unlucky there to be fair like it just hit the back of Colin Wilson's head they had, they had two on two inside Timo was trying to drop in in front but it was a two on two inside uh, it was a ball down the line to Niall Donner but just didn't make it yeah, Byron with the kick out to Sean O'Flynn. Sean O'Flynn gathers the mark and he's still looking to go. Collins Ukuchuk was to his right hand side and Collins has it. Gives the pass to Colin Wilson. Colin Wilson, Martin Dial has hit the ground. Wilson to Donoher. Donoher now to Sean O'Flynn. Sean O'Flynn still going, looking for support and Collins Ukuchuk is under a lot of pressure and he well marshaled by a number of Greg Cullen defenders. One of them was Shane O'Neill. Here comes Donoher wearing number six onto his left boot from Niall Donoher. Where it has gone, it's gone out to the right and wide. Good defending though by Greg Cullen. Didn't make it easy for them. No, Niall attacked the space really well and did well to get his shot off. Just unlucky that it was just out by the near side of the post. But, like, Greg were well back in numbers there. There wasn't much space at all. Yeah, Bulger with a short kick out to Mark Timmons and they've set Greg free through Owen Aylesbury. Owen Aylesbury with a kick pass to Jamie Sheen. Sheen has plenty of ground in front of him. Jack Byrne has made a run as well, but Sheen is still going. Sheen might give it out to Jack Byrne. Jack Byrne dinks and he onto his left boot from Jack Byrne. Looks good and that's the third score of the game for the men down around the, the bridge, Davy. They're going well. Yeah, no, Cordo didn't set up their numbers there right at all after the kick out. You know, Danny Bulger had the ball out, it was gone very quickly. So they didn't get set up at all. So Byron with a, a short kick out to Barry Donnelly. As we said, rainfall here on Port Leash this morning it has stopped in the last 15 minutes or so, but it's extremely, extremely heavy. County board officials are doing a bit of testing on it before the teams came out, but we're good to go and the game is on, and it's Greg Cullen who lead. Uh, three points to, to no score five and a half minutes gone the scoreboard here in the Moor Park we, we think is wrong we think they should have an extra point in court with now they have a free or free John Flynn has played advantage Rob Tyrrell was fouled and quartered in a little bit of pr pressure and there's been a bit of a head injury over the 
the far side. It's and Connor Hogan, and I actually think it may actually he may have twisted his knee. Um, he looks to be in a lot of pain, and it was. Uh, I don't think anyone made contact in the end with the head. He could be in a lot of trouble here with his groin or his knee. And the ground is so slippy. The, f the footwear is <laughs> is probably oh. one most important thing in the bag this morning when you're packing it. Oh. To be honest, like even yesterday, it was it was quite slippy, and there was no rain yesterday, as I alluded to earlier. Like you know, but today I can only imagine it's it's, it's like a skating rink out there, like anywhere. You know, the, it's not it's no fault of more parks. You know, the ground has been so dry for so long, and then you get heavy rain like that on the top of that kind of surface. It's impossible to to get it. You know, to be able to <laughs> get set for it. Yeah, so there is a bit of concern with. Uh Connor Hogan over on the far side, as you said, Greg Cullen are three points, no score, two points from Danny Bulger. One was a free, one is a 45, and the other is from play. And they have looked dangerous. They've moved that ball very quickly through the channels and given a nice kick pass inside too. Yeah, like the quarter are looking to get bodies back, but as you see, if you move a ball that quickly from your own kick out, it's it's impossible for a team to get back. Very unlucky quarter, you know. They have had three balls inside their 45. Niall was very unlucky with that shot, but it just shows, like you know. One or two points, how, how the difference, a swing, you know, within 30 seconds could have been 2-1. Instead, it's 3-0 down the other end. And court would do need to, to get to register a score, just even for their own, for, for the confidence. And as I said, if Greg Cullen get, get kind of a lead, they're very good at sitting in and breaking. Yeah, bit of one-ons with a couple of players. to see Eddie Kinsley, the court with manager, is told Matthew Byron to kick a ball away as well. Trying to slow it up maybe when the ball goes out over the, the end line up there. And, but just in relation to results for both teams, Greg Cullen are unbeaten, of course, in the championship. They got the better at Clannis Lee, won 10 to 9 in round one, and then had a comprehensive victory over Stradbury in round two. They won 216 to 111. So they've been mean enough in defence. They've only conceded 121. Well, for Courtwood, round one, they were winners over Park Rat Neska, 211 to 110. Then they lost to Port Leash, 290 to 15. Then they bounced back with a last minute Dylan Keane goal. To, to beat Rose and Alice 115 to 210 so we're back underway Connor Hogan seems to be okay as well and here comes Niall Donoghue Donoghue taking on the number 2 Sean McGrath Donoghue's trying to get it out of play and the ball has gone out for a 45 and he's dangerous but John Flynn I think is looking for a, the umpires are consulting but I think John Flynn is pointing to a wide ball was he John, Davey? I think they're going to give the 45 here yeah, the 45. It, was, it was tricky enough from here anyway I wasn't sure to be honest but an awful lot will depend on Niall Dunner, won't it, for Corpus? Ah, to be fair, yeah, like sure, Niall is an exceptional baller. He can play any part of the field, always good. You know, and he was he obviously played a lot of his years under uh, with, with Leash at wing back, but he started off minor with us. He was a wing forward, and, you know, you always expected him to clip two or three points. Yeah, so Danny Luttrell stands over this. It'll be a right foot of effort from Luttrell. Accurate enough on... With a commentator's curse, he puts it out over to the left-hand side. It's still in play, and Greg Cullen ready to come away with through Mark Timmons. Timmons give it a hand pass that could have been called a hospital pass, but Greg Cullen come away with through Sean McGrath and Owen Aylesbury, and McGrath's coming up along the field. Number 10 over here, Danny O'Reilly's over on his own on the far side, but they're not going to need him. McGrath's still going. A kick pass inside to Lee Walker. That's the second one inside to Lee Walker, and I think Lee Walker is looking for a bit better service. Yeah, the, the ball was on there in front. I don't know why the, he looked to, to play it in over the top, to be fair. Um, you just see Trevor Collins like driving there through the middle on that ball like that. Options left and right and that options inside, so they're very dangerous when they get moving with the ball. Yeah, Matthew Byron's second ball on the field and quarter goalkeeper won't be in a hurry. The, the wind is against them. There's a sp stiff breeze enough here in MW Higher and Moor Park. So Byron looking to kick out the ball, looking for runners. Rob Terrell is free, but he's going over the, to the stand side to Collins Ukuchuku and with, with Danny Lutcher and the ball has gone out off. Danny Lutcher and it's going to be a great Cullen line ball Danny looked to break that and to be honest he probably he, he was ahead he probably should have just went and won it himself in conditions like this it's all about just getting that ball in the hand and securing it yeah Lee Walker from the 45 right foot of effort from the former O'Hanron's man and he also hits it out to the wide and he's probably a little bit frustrated at the minute he's looking to get himself on plenty of ball and it's just not happening for him at the minute yeah, that was unlucky, that was on. You know, some people would say 47, 48 yards out, why is he going for it? But with a little bit of a breeze at the back and with his right foot, it was definitely the right option in my book. Yeah, but Byron with the kick out. talking, I suppose. Byron out to Martin Dial there for Greg Cullen's look at the winner, but it's won by the number 13, Keen Dial. He gets the pass in to Donoghue. Donoghue with the mark done, and I think it's actually going to be a free. Keen Dial was hit late as he as he kicked the ball. Now, Donoghue did claim the mark, but I actually think it's going to be a free and should be a chance for for Court to get on the ball. And Niall Dunn. 
Yeah, so it's a free because Niall Dunn is able to take it now. Yeah, so Niall Dunn is going to take it. He is 2-11 in the championship so far. Behind him then is Niall Dunner, Michael Doyle and Dylan Keane and Paul O'Flynn. So they have 11 different scores. Both teams are actually 11 different scores so far in the championship. And Niall Dunn looking to get his side off the mark. 11, just over 11 minutes gone. Greg Cullen lead three points to no score here in MW Higher Moor Park. Dunn slips as he takes that and falls straight into the bread basket for Mark Timmons there on the goal line. Able to get it away. Get away through Owen Aylesbury. Owen Aylesbury might have Trevor Collins if he wants him but still decides to go and Trevor Collins now is still going attacking as well and Greg Cullen now are on the attack. There are plenty of bodies Plenty of players there going through. Luke Aylesbury with it now. Now here's Trevor Collins. Trevor Collins goes past the 45. Into the opposition 45. Going up to the 21. Looking for the pass. Has uh, Jack Byrne is over there. Wearing number 12. Back inside to Collins. Collins now it's, uh, in around in the end line. Looking for a pass inside. Here's a chance for Greg Cullen. Is it a penalty? Giving a pass away. Lee Walker hit it wide. But John Flynn has awarded a penalty. In cr- correct decision or not, Davey? I think it's a bit soft to us, um, and I think the initial contact could have been actually outside of the box. We'll see it here on the replay anyway, but it's it's one of those, it's a free outside the box. Is it a free inside? Colin Wilson, I think, was it? Yeah, there's, there is, he he gets a good bit of attention. I'd be looking for it if I was a forward, to be honest, but I don't know whether, you know, it, but it, the killing part there is, you know, it was a... It was a 30 yard free um, and you know when, when you're 3-0 down you just need to settle yourself I was actually when, when it was called a free I think Niall Donner would have stuck it and just Niall Dunn he wasn't sure whether he was going to kick it over his hands are off the ground he decided off the ground probably because they were into a bit of a breeze and it's just a killer down the other end now and it, an opportunity for Greg to go 1-3 to no score ahead you just the movement from Greg up the field as well uh, Trevor Collins Owen Aylesbury Luke Aylesbury they absolutely cut court with a, a part and I think it's Mark Timmons that's going to stand over this but yeah. to have them runners yeah well See, that's, huge. That's, that's the unlucky thing of you know quarter are looking at, at, at playing a sweeper so like it means that Trevor Collins is actually getting that freedom then to actually break which you know it's like you're Robin Peter to pay Paul kind of thing you know yeah up steps Timmons right footed from Timmons oh he's missed it for Matthew Byron went the wrong way as well but Timmons looked for the for his bottom left hand side and I think See, we're going to have it again it and it it's just went wide to be honest yeah. yeah maybe I've been harsh on him so just see it here in the replay. He picked his spot, but bounced off the surface and out goes and a let off for court. But it's still three points to no score. 13 minutes and 20 seconds reads the clock. Matthew Byron is looking for something to kick the ball out. It's out on top of Sean O'Flynn. Sean O'Flynn daughters three great colour men around and Sean O'Flynn gets the fist to it. Falls now to, to Timmons. Gives it to Aaron Forbes. Forbes mid with a heavy shoulder by Marker Haller in the full back. Back to Timmons. Timmons now with a right foot of kick inside. That kick inside is to Jack Byrne. Jack Byrne wins a free and... It's that pace inside again that's causing court with plenty of problems. Yeah, that ball into the full forward line is definitely on, you know, and to be fair, Jack, you know, he's only up out of winner, but my God, he's, he's he probably, you know, given the rule, he probably would have been playing last year only for, for the, that rule and not being able to play underage. Um, he's a very elusive little footballer and he's very effective, very intelligent. I see Greg Cullen have a, an ultra fan base over on the terrace. They're given, there's no premiership soccer this weekend, but they're doing their best to facilitate the, the chanting over on the terrace side they're not, they're not going to get they're not going to be dry over there anyway so Conor Kelly kicks this and Conor Kelly does the business and that's his ninth score in the championship and it's 14 and a half minutes gone and just court would find it hard to to get off the mark David and if you're Eddie Kinsley you'd be concerned where the score is going to come from at the moment yeah it is and like if you look at it you know it's 4-0 but there's been nothing really between the sides either you know like uh, Grey Cullen have scored three dead balls Court would have missed two. You know, I know it's a 45, so it's harsh to call it a miss. But that's just at this level when you're playing when you're when you're playing in this competition, you need to you need to be trying to stick them. Yeah, Byron with that kick out. Colin Wilson has it now. He's tackled by Martin Dyle. Martin Dyle looks to win possession. He has won possession. Still there. Shane O'Neill has it now. The former Knock Bay College student, Hogan Cup winner in 2005 with the Carlo Bordert School down there. So he gives it to Mark Timmons, who then. Delivered to Jamie Sheen. Sheen looking for options. Timmons now is free. and That's a, that's a fine, fine block by the number 11, Niall Dunn. He gets a free. And Niall Dunn had to be... He had to do that perfectly because Greg Cullen had numbers on the overlap. Yeah, it was a great turnover there. Great handing right on the ball. So we're back underway again. Rob here with a pass to Sean O'Flynn. O'Flynn now is sized up by D- Danny O'Reilly wearing number 10. And Courtwood now are looking for runners. And the runner is Sean O'Flynn. He wins a back. And O'Reilly... He's still marching up and the referee, John Flynn, says it's a free. Give, try to give advantage of what's in there and we'll probably see Danny Lutcher come back out to take this one again. 
Yeah, there's a good bit of pressure on this now, Tomas. You know, it is 15 minutes in. It's just that kind of a feeling, you know. Uh, but Danny has a superb strike of the ball. He probably rather has this side of the field as well. So if he just gets underneath it and just let it up, it, the ball should do the rest. Yeah, so there is a stiff breeze against him. The breeze is playing down towards the Joe Mallon end here in MW Higher Moor Park. Thankfully, we haven't had rain since be just before the start of the game. So please, God, we will have a dry evening. Of course, the next match then... Coming up is Port Arnton and Ballerone. Up steps Lutcher, right foot a strike from Danny Lutcher, and that has also tailed out to the right and wide, and that's the, the second wide. There is a stiff breeze there, David. It's, it, it is difficult to play into that. It is, absolutely. You know, and, and it's even for the mindset where you're going for that, you're trying to put that little bit more into it, and sometimes when you try to put more into it off the ground, it, it can go a little bit more wayward. Yeah, Greg Cullen have won primary possession from the kick out. Sean McGrath was there for it from Danny Bulger. McGrath came up along the field and they're still going. Shane O'Neill with a cross field pass to Owen Aylesbury. So they've switched to play. Lee Walker is coming out deep looking for it, but Aylesbury still has possession and Luke Aylesbury now has possession. He's past the 45. Back out to Lee Walker. Lee Walker is standing on the 45. The rain has, has taken the lines away from the, the ground surface here in the Moor Park, so they're very faint lines on it. The flags are telling everyone where the lines are at the minute. Martin Dial got the pass from Janie Sheen. Back to Sheen. Sheen now looking for options. Aylesbury's, one of the Aylesbury's has it, and that is the number four, Owen Aylesbury. He's looking for options inside. Court would have plenty of bodies back. I see Barry Donnelly sitting in in front of the full back line there as well. Niall Dunn tackled. Tackled oh. Lee Walker, and Lee Walker's giving possession away. It's two on Here two comes in Niall the far Dunn. end. Tomas, if they can move it. Yeah, Niall Dunn with a kick pass inside to Niall Dunn. I heard Mark Timmons is over there with Niall Dunn. I heard Timmons and looked to shore him up, but Dunner looked to get by him. Here comes the number 10, Paula Flynn. Paula Flynn tackled by Daniel O'Reilly. O'Reilly fishes with the tackle. Back out to Donoghue. Now Greg Cullen have numbers back. Left foot a strike from Niall Donoghue. Where's it going to go? And it's gone out to the left-hand side. In, it, as you said, 2-1-2 two two situation. But Greg Cullen got plenty of bodies back. Yeah, it's just it's very impressive how Greg got back there in, in numbers there. You know, it was a 2-1-2. Two -on -two. Unfortunately, the ball to Niall probably was a little bit too wide. It gave Greg that slight opportunity. But it's very impressive how quickly they worked back. Yeah. I think Bulger's going to have to go along with this. There's no short option. He does. Right foot a strike out over onto Terrace. Straight to Rob Tier, load of court with Man in White. Gathers the primary procession in court. are looking to set up a number of attack to Keen Dial. Keen Dial now with a hand pass to Paula Flynn. Paula Flynn just on the edge of the D. Paula Flynn with a score. And that's what they want. And I see Eddie Kinsler punching the air in the light. They'll be delighted to get off the scoreboard. Absolutely. You know, it's 4 1 now. And, you know, it's been a very, very 50 50 game. As I said, it's just the place balls. It's about sticking them. But if they, get, if they can get another one or two here. Yeah, Greg Cullen have won the kick out. 18 and a half minutes gone. Greg Cullen lead four points to one. They're back on the attack through Sean McGrath. He's been very impressive in the opening 18 minutes. Here's Shane O'Neill. Shane O'Neill now in oceans of space. No one near him. Gives the pass. Gives the pass to Brian Byrne. Brian Byrne though held up by Collins Ukuchuku. And here come Courtwood again. They're looking for another score. They're... Their backs are up, their tails are up, as they'd say, and they're looking for the pass inside. Here comes Dunner, Dunner looking to gather this. Gives the pass to Sean O'Flynn. Sean O'Flynn now, it's a three-on-three -three situation. Flynn looks for Lutcher. Lutcher's inside onto the, Fist just inside over. the big square. Maybe a bit of a, too bad of a pass. And, but Sean yes. O'Flynn does well. Recover that very well. Yeah, Danny was probably half thinking a goal, but probably the right option would have been just fisted straight over the bar, but he got it back out with Sean, got a great score off his left foot. So, all of a sudden, quarter of the back, they've halved the deficit. 4-2, 19 Minutes and 20 seconds, the scoreboard reads in MW Higher, Amour Park. Danny Bulger's looking for, I think, that short option. Quarter have kind of cut off the short option now, Davey. I think they're going to have to go along. Yeah, quarter are setting up well on the kickouts. The only thing is, if they lose, which is John Finn is after blowing it. Yeah. See, Shane O'Neill not, not happy with his goalkeeper down there either. And it's, it's going to be a hot ball on the on the 21 yard line. Rob Tyrrell is going in for it, and Quarter now will look to have plenty of bodies try and win the break maybe here and get themselves back into the game but scores for quarter so far have been Sean O'Flynn the two O'Flynn's have been on the board while Danny Bulger with two points for Greg Cullen Jack Byrne and Conor Kelly but there's a tussle now between Rob Tyrrell and Mark Timmons we'll see who wins it and Tyrrell won that and he gives the ball back out to the number 13 number 13 is Keane Dyle Keane Dyle with a shot shot in anger and that's the fourth wide of the game won't be happy with that one yeah, no, Paul O'Flynn is remonstrating with him there. But to be honest, like, you know, that's a shot that she, he, he was right to go for. It's just poor execution, but it's very easy to tell a lad you're wrong when you kick it wide. Yeah, of course, the draw will take place for the senior semi finals after the second game. Reminder if you, we have a double header, so it's two games for the 10 euro. If you buy the first one, you're entitled to watch the second one. You just have to 
Oh, Mark Halloran could be in a little bit of trouble. He's lucky man, I think, Davey, is he? I think he's very lucky that Aaron Forbes didn't hit the ground there, to be honest. I think we have it on the replay here. We'll see exactly what happened. There was a strike, definite strike. Yeah, they were wrestling, they were wrestling, but John has decided to yeah. leave well enough alone. But Play it away, lads, he's saying. So, on come Greg Cullen again through number four, Owen Aylesbury. Owen Aylesbury with a kick pass inside to Jack Byrne. Jack Byrne has had plenty of joy down that side so far on the third side, looking for options. Daniel O'Reilly, he gives it to Daniel O'Reilly. Riley has Jamie Sheen now, so Sheen is a back. Mark Timmons is looking for it to be switched across the field, and there it is now back to Mark Timmons. Mark Timmons now with a right foot of effort. He's seen the space, and we'll see where it's gone, and that's gone out to the left and wide, and that's the third wide for Gray Cullen. I'm not really sure. Maybe he was thinking that the wind was going to carry it. Yeah, well, I think he was better off if he had to come back around the 45, around, you know what I mean, create a space. They don't have to panic on the ball. You know, Cordwood are getting bodies back. They are well set up, but just hold possession and see when the time is right then to have the shot. And I don't think it was the best option there at that stage. Yeah, Cordwood have won the break from the kick out, and that was the number 10, Paul O'Flynn, who gathered and Jamie Sheen fouled him. But referee John Flynn said he oh, wanted to bring the ball up. But here comes Dunher. Dunher, it's one on one inside. Dunher with a chance. Go. Oh. It's, it, oh, it's bounced off the post, has it? It has it's bounced off the butt of the post. Oh, what a chance. Oh, his run was exceptional and he called, he pointed and pointed to Rob Turrell to play it and Rob Turrell put it on the money for him. And yeah, could have decided to tip it over the bar, but he went for it and it was very unlucky. Yeah, went for the juggler and Port would have it back again. They've won the break, won that's attack now through Sean O'Flynn. So they're looking to get themselves back on the scoreboard again and they're looking for plenty of options to come up. Kind of Greg of plenty of bodies back there. We'll see Danny Luttrell making a run, looking for an effort. And that's Niall Dunn. I think that's after hitting that one and has just gone out to the left and wide again. But yeah. we go back to Niall, Niall Dunn. Has, I was waiting for the to net to rattle. We'll see it here in the replay. Yeah, when he, when he struck it, it was like Bulger. Danny was just looking at it um, because it, it looked like it was in. Oh, oh. great. Strike. How did it Very stay out? Lovely. So we're back underway again. Mark Timmons got the kick out from Danny Bulger and he gives it to Owen Aylesbury. 23 minutes here. The clock reads in MW Ironmore Park. Craig Cullen lead four points to two. Timmons with a crossfield ball to Trevor Collins. Collins coming, gantering up along the stand side here in Amore Park. As he said, the pitch is in fine condition. Probably a lot of very greasy. Forbes on the ball. Had a big battle with Marco Halloran a couple of moments ago and they're still battling away looking for possession. Halloran gives him the dunt in the back but we're still away. Here comes... Brian Byrne, Brian Byrne going to be tackled by a number of quarter players and silly fee foul by Colin Wilson. Brian Byrne was going nowhere. Yeah, it's it's one of those. There was absolutely no real need. There was a good few bodies around there, and you know it was it was a lazy hand in. And I was reminding the viewers just before we had that little bit of a scuffle. If you two games for the ten euro today, if you're you're entitled to watch the second game, so all you need to do is make sure to keep the password that you received for the game you're currently watching because you will need it then again to watch the second game so you will need to click on the link for the second game and use the same password but 10 euro for two games plenty of value in that here today in MW Higher Moor Park Conor Kelly stands over this right foot a kick from the youngster and it looks good and it is and it's going to be his second score of the game and it's going to be his size fifth of the game so I suppose Kevin Doog is the happiest of the managers at the minute yeah, absolutely. But uh, to, be, to be fair, you know what I mean? 24 minutes gone, there is a bit of a stiff enough breeze there. You saw that with Niall Dunn's last shot. Like, it, it was on target and it just tailed in because the wind caught it. So if, if Cordwood can go in two or three points down, I know they'll be, they'll be plenty happy after being 4 nil down, you know? So yeah. it's all to play for. It is indeed a bit of a mishap between Matthew Byron and Adam O'Halloran, but Byron has it and they've got away with it. Rob Tierno is under a bit of pressure from Aaron Forbes and Tierno with a risky kick passing only 10 metres away from each other. But Fort would I think have got away with it and have won a free and have attack on the way through Barry Donnelly wearing number 24 here today the defender the army man plenty of experience in that court of back line he's looking for options up front and he gives the ball away though gives the ball away to Aylesbury Aylesbury to Timmins Timmins now is looking for options to how he was going to give the kick pass decides to hold it up he's gone through the middle here comes Martin Dial. Timmins is hit by Rob Tyrrell Timmins gets up Tyrrell offers him the hands of friendship and Greg Cullen are back underway again through Martin Dial, Dial looking for the runner he has the runner he has that runner through number 10 here's the chance and here's the chance is there going to be another penalty no back out oh it's a free out picked the ball up off the ground I think Daniel O'Reilly could have had a goal yeah we'll have to replay here. great save by Matthew Byrne and it broke to Brian Byrne and probably took a second too long and the defender got around him brilliantly 
Yeah, I'm not sure what. I'm not the sure what the free, free was for, to from. be honest. Yeah, I think John Flynn said it was for touching the ball on the ground, but uh, not it was what. Great he's recovery though by the defender that got back around Brian Byrne. Brian Byrne probably took a second, probably could have just banged it straight away, but got back in around him very, very well. And I don't think you know he had already given a penalty, I suppose, but I, I, I genuinely don't think there was anything there. Yeah, so we're back underway. Connor Hogan gave a shot to Matthew Byrne. Matthew Byrne is doing what Graham Brody was doing last night in the Port Leash game. He's coming straight out to the field. He's out to halfway. Gives the kick pass inside to Niall Donoghue. It's going to go over the sideline. and <laughs> Wasteful possession given away. Yeah, summer football, that's all right. But when, when the ground gets greasy, if you're heading, kicking it towards the sideline at all, it's just going to, it's just going to carry it. As I was saying, semi-final draw will be after the Port Arnton and Ballero game. Already, Odem season, Port Leash are in that hat. Port Leash getting the better at Clonis Lee and then Odemsey's pulling off a fantastic last four or five minutes or so to, to defeat St. Joseph's here yesterday evening so Owen Kearns will be an extremely happy man that he's killing our base side or into the hat well, who will join them at the minute it's Greg Cullen that are, are ahead 5-2 27 just 27 minutes gone here's Sean McGrath he's been impressive so far gives it to Martin Dyle probably a bit of a hospital pass to Martin Dyle and Quarter of one possession back. Greg Cullen though, now have also one possession back to Sean McGrath. Back out here we go to Trevor Collins. Brian Byrne to Trevor Collins. Collins with a shot. And it's a right foot a shot. And Jack Byrne is trying to keep it in play. It's gone out to the right and wide. I make that fourth wide for Greg Cullen. Just to mark, Sean McGrath is a fine footballer, Davy. Oh, absolutely. Two. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And to be fair there, Trevor, I think he just just went to put too much into it you know he has a bit of a breeze there he just let it up and the wind would have done the rest with it but he, he went to put the boot right through it and as a result it's skewed yeah Matthew Byrne is claiming the ball is soft referee John Flynn is telling him to get on with it I think he might be looking to take a few minutes off the clock but we're on the way again right foot a strike out by Matthew Byrne he's looking for Keane Dyle Keane Dyle there with Sean McGrath Keane Dyle wins the mark puts the hand up and he done very well to win that kick Great pass inside hands. to Donoghue Dunhurst on his own. He will need support. Sean O'Flynn is racing to get to Colin him. Gives Wilson it back to Colin Wilson. Oh, Colin Wilson. That's going to straight into the, to the basket for need Danny to Bulger. Here. What? Oh, We're unsure wide. whether the ball has gone wide yet. The umpire half waved it wide. But Danny Bulger has placed it down for a kick out. That was court with six wide of the game, I make it. Bulger short to Mark Timmons. Timmons is looking for the long one up to Jamie Sheen. Sheen is looking to win it. He does win it. And Tyrrell is around him, but Sheen fell to the ground, got back up, and still has possession. Here's Walker. He's been quiet enough since the first couple of minutes of the game, but he's looking to take on the number 10, Paula Flynn. He wins the foul. And just saying he's quiet, but he's dangerous as well. Yeah, I know. He was definitely, you know, just. They're, they're needless frees in my opinion you know um, and you know we've said it like Greg Cullen I think it's only one point from play so far um, so make them kick it from play I know they've conceded five goals in the championship already so maybe it's a, it's a little bit of a fear that teams are going to get in for a goal so they're, they're given that free it's so that they cut out the option of the goal maybe that's what they're, why they're giving some of them but it was a little bit needless in my opinion yeah as you said conceded five goals one to Parker at Niskin one round one two to Port Leach in round two and then two to Rose and Alice in round three so I'm sure that has been part of their training set up over the last two weeks since Dylan Diles or Dylan Keane scored that last minute goal Conor Kelly steps up for Greg Cullen from the free and he duly obliges and that's his third score of the game he's got ha he's accounting for half of his side's score so far, 6 points to 2 29 and a half, so we're ticking towards the half time break, we haven't seen sorry, just see in front of me it's going to be 2 minutes of additional time so we'll, see, we'll hear that call out in a moment or so, and that kick out has gone woefully wrong, Matthew Byron gave it out to, to Tyrrell over the side, and Tyrrell slid over, over the sideline, so Greg Cullen are back on the attack through on Aylesbury, Aylesbury up to the 21, looking for Jack Byrne, Jack Byrne with a right foot of effort from Jack Byrne and that has also gone out to the right and wide, and I make that their fifth. 11 wides, Davey, I make it. A lot of chances that probably a lot better things should have been done with them. Yeah, that was that was definitely on. You know, Jack, 80% of the time, that'd be going over the bar, you know, at least. Um, so it's just one of those misses. But it's a really important two minutes for quarter, in my opinion. You know, there's a big difference between 6 3 and 7, seven 2. So we'll see what happens in the next two minutes. Yeah, big Byron with the kick out on top of Tyrrell. Tyrrell does it. Wins it and he breaks it down to Sean O'Flynn. Flynn was there to gather it up. Flynn fell to his feet but gave it back to Tyrrell. Here comes the full back, Mark O'Halloran, met by Danny O'Reilly. And it's a, a late tackle. You could see that happening. And maybe Mark O'Halloran might have played a little bit for it, but you could see it was still a free. 
Yeah, no, it was silly out of Danny because you'd know Mark, <laughs> you know what he was going to do there. And as I said, big difference between 7 2 and 6 3. And Cork would have a great opportunity now to, to make it 6 3, and probably won't be much play after that then. So, Danny Luttrell makes his way over to the referee, John Flynn from The Rock, and he's about 30, about 27 or 8 metres out from goal. So. Just set the, the edge of the D over towards the terrace, so it's going to be a right foot of effort from, from Luttrell. We'll see where it goes, and looks good. He doesn't miss too many of them, to be fair, and that's his first one of the day, and gets his side back in, reduces the rears by to 6-3, 31 minutes and 20 seconds gone. Greg Cullen with the short kick out to Mark Timmons, collected it just at the edge of the corner of the D. Timmons now goes across, across the field to the number five, Luke Aylesbury. Luke Aylesbury gets past... Danny Luttrell and here's Martin Dial. Martin Dial tackled by Niall Donoher. Luttrell, Aylesbury again. Jamie Sheen now on possession of the ball. Heavy tackled by again by Niall Donoher. But Greg Cullen probably happy enough to keep possession and maybe get a score if they can as well. Dial makes his way up between the 65 and the 45. They're up on the opposition 45. Jamie Sheen has it back again. Looks for Jack. Maybe Jack Byrne wanted it over the far side. Didn't give it to him. Going to try and keep the ball now, you'd imagine. Aylesbury again. Tackled by Luttrell. And he's given a free away. And McCorder might try and get this quickly. Quarter of 15 men in yeah. here, pretty much inside the 45, but it was dead right. You know, last play of the first half, just everybody back. No real benefit because I don't think he'll allow a break and play or an attack here. Say he'll blow it. No, that's yep. it. So, entertaining enough, Davy. Court, Greg Cullen leads 6 3. Obviously, conditions have been easy, but two teams going full, full belt. Of nice game of football. Absolutely, 6 3, and you know what I mean? It's down to place balls. Um, quarter of missed three. Um, and <laughs> it, it could be. It could easily be level. Um, Greg Cullen do look like they could pierce them at stages. You know the ball is on early inside. Generally, the the way they're going to play in the second half, as I call it, into the Abbey League's end, there is the you generally is that little bit more space. So if if Cordwood can can uh, prevent any goal opportunities or goals for Greg Cullen, they're they're definitely well in it. Um, they have the breeze in the second half. The one thing I would say is that Greg Cullen's style of play it won't. It won't phase them too much to be playing into a breeze, um, and they, you know they love running it and they love being ahead. They play really well. They get bodies back. They compact it. So like if Court would come out in the second half and think they're going to spray a ball into the full forward line, I don't think there's going to be much space to be playing it in. And in these conditions, if that ball hits the ground when you're playing with the wind, it can often just skid and it'll be just gone. So they should still probably Court would should still nearly stick to their to their running game to a large extent, in my opinion. Yeah. So look, we'll be. Back for the, the second half shortly. As I said, a reminder, we have two games. So Bally, Rowan Abbey and Port Arrington face off af after this game. So if you have purchased the Courtwood and Greg Cullen game, you're also entitled to watch the second game. All you need to do is keep your password safe and you need to click on the link then for the second game using the same password. And of course, then at six o'clock this evening, the relegation final between Bally Linen and Collection. That game is live on Twitter space. So that's audio commentary only. All you need to do is to... Search for the Leash GA Twitter page, log on to the Twitter page and you'll be able to hear audio commentary of the relegation game from about 5.55 or so this evening. So that's it. We'll be back to you shortly for the second half.
Welcome back to MW Higher and Moore Park. Half time in the first ever double header here in the Leash Shopping Centre Senior Football Championship quarter finals. Great Cunning lead six points to three. The scores have come from Danny Bulger with two, Connor Kelly with three, Jack Byrne with one, while for Courtwood, Sean O'Flynn, Paul O'Flynn, and Danny Luttrell have all been on target. And we've plenty of viewers across the stream in here. And it's a big hello to Billy Highland, a ballerina man, and told he's watching in Hartford, Connecticut, in the United States of America. So big welcome to him and I'm told with people from Dubai and even Barcelona here viewing in so we hope you're, you are enjoying the, the service so as I said joined by Arliss Cruz attacker David Conway on co-commentary David hopefully we're in for a good second half here and uh, Court would have to breeze as well yeah no, as I said Court would have to breeze Greg Cullen love playing from in front and they won't mind they won't mind playing into the window really either oh, and they have a free as well an early free Tyrrell now gives the pass into Niall Donoghue and I think Shane O'Neill stood in front of Rob Tyrrell as he was just about to kick it and the referee John Flynn has brought it up to the 45 yard mark and maybe Niall Donoghue would have been happy enough to go on with it would he? Yeah well he was running into 15's corner but uh, it's a little bit of yeah kind of softish free and then to, to, to get it into the 45 is uh, just just what Court would have liked to alright but uh, yeah Niall could have had a run at, at uh, Sean McGrath there he would have fancied it. So Danny Luttrell stands over this. He did score one just before the break. So himself, Paul O'Flynn and Sean O'Flynn have accounted for their three scores so far. And manager Eddie Kinsa will be hoping that he can make it number four. He's going to kick it with his right boot. Referee blows the whistle. Luttrell yep. kicks it and strikes it. And we'll see where it goes. And that has just gone out to the right and wide. And that's their seventh wide of the game. They could all going to be costly at the end. Yeah, seven wides and one into the goalie's hand in as well. You know, so it's... It's the place balls, Grey Cullen haven't missed one, Cordwood have missed four now. Yes, so that short kick out that we've seen in the first half to Mark Timmons on the edge of the D has worked out again. And two of the Aylesbury's are coming when it's Luke Aylesbury has to the ball, but he gives it to Jamie Sheen. And all Aylesbury's looking for it now. And Owen Aylesbury does get it to the wear number four back to Sheen. Sheen up to the 21, out into the 13. Barry Donnelly tackles. Here comes Sheen in the square, has it goal chance. Oh, he's drove it. It's actually gone out for a 45. He came like a train through the middle, in fairness to Courtwood. They're claiming the ball as wide, but Greg Cullen over 45. We'll yeah, see it on the replay. Yeah, I'm not sure who actually got the last hand on it at the back post. Was it? Yeah, yeah. no, it was the right call. Very good call by the, by the umpire. So, after all that, the given out, we still have a 45 that has to be taken. The linesman, Vincent Dowlin, is over there. He's going to mark the spot. So, two minutes of the second half gone. Greg Cullen lead six points to three. I don't want to be painfully repeating myself, but you know, if Danny puts this over the bar, <laughs> um, just the difference of, of of the place takers is is really it could be seven three, you know, and realistically it should be at least six four at the moment. Yes. We'll see where this goes from Danny Luttrell. We can see that the ultras have moved up. To <laughs> just the, 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 ra it, yeah. the, the, ra the rather following the forwards, obviously. <laughs> So Luttrell kicks and kicked it out onto the, the left hand side and wide and that's their sixth wide of the game. So that's 13 wides between both sides and Matthews, look, Eddie Kins is telling Matthew Byron to get his head up and he wants the quick kick out and there's plenty of options. He goes straight down the middle. Niall Dunn now has come out for that and Niall Dunn has gathered the ball as well and looks to pass it inside to Dunner. Dunner has been picked up by Aylesbury and Dunner now gives the pass to try to give it to Paul O'Flynn but there was the number four on Aylesbury able to pick up the pieces. Sean McGrath wearing number two out to Luke Aylesbury and McGrath has it again. Dunner tackles and between McGrath and Aylesbury to win the ball back but McGrath then gives it away. Gives it away to Rob Tyrrell. Right footed effort in from Rob Tyrrell in the top of Niall Dunn. Niall Dunn has it. What can Niall Dunn do? It turns and shoots. Goal! Great goal from Niall Dunn. Great ball in by Rob Tyrrell there to be fair. Niall Dunn called for it and he stood up and he won it well. We see the replay here. Great outside of the football in. Well done, won brilliantly. And to be fair, who's Jamie Sheehan? Kind of nearly even got in Danny Bulger's way. Yeah, so Greg Cullen get the game back underway quickly. Timmons now gives the pass outside to Martin Dial. Martin Dial has a bit of work over the terrace to gather it, but he gathers it now. That was Niall Dunn's third goal of the championship. 3 11, I make it. He's their top scorer by a considerable margin. and He's put them back into the game and they're level. So, Absolutely all to play for here now, that's for sure. 
Shane O'Neill now with the ball. He's looking up for options. Doesn't have many, but he gives it to Lee Walker. Walker being tackled by Robbie Flynn. Robbie Flynn, Throw Walker ball. gives it away. Throw, Throw ball. ball, says referee yeah. John Flynn. Correct call, definitely. Kevin Duke didn't agree with it, but he's never going to agree with that one anyways. But you no, called it, Davey. he might have been, been slightly tugged, so I think maybe slightly that was what they were probably remonstrating over. But So, just looked at the goal again, but what a lifeline for... The Bally British men, and they're back on their way again. Shoot Connor Hogan, gives it to Rob Tyrrell. Rob Tyrrell now just before halfway, but Rob Tyrrell gives it the ball away. A poor kick pass. Here's Walker. Not Greg like him. He, he loves, he loves playing the ball off the boot, and he's usually very, very, very good with it. Yeah, Brian Byrne with a kick pass inside. Back to Jack Byrne. Jack Byrne with a right foot of effort from Jack Byrne, and that's a good response and a good score from Jack Byrne. It's his second of the game. Yeah, it's a great run in field. Um, he checked his run, uh, and the, the defender didn't cop it. Brian Byrne found him brilliantly. An easy score. So they've responded to that goal with a, with a score from Jack Byrne. They lead by a point, seven to one three. Thirty-five minutes gone. Matthew Byrne right foot a kick out down around the middle, but Dan- Daniel O'Reilly's there able to gather. He gathers the mark, gives the pass to Jack Byrne. Jack Byrne trying to gather up Rob. Rob Tyrrell and Rob Flynn were around him, but Jack Byrne is able to get it away. Here's to Aylesbury. Aylesbury tackled by Paula Flynn. Aylesbury Owen gets Shane O'Neill. Shane O'Neill then with a pass and it's a free was given the advantage and he's blowing a free in and court would just need to need to come need to settle themselves again because Greg Cullen are going to get themselves back to that three point margin very quickly if they start, if they keep giving away the freeze. Yeah, I actually think the initial foul here was actually outside of forty five. I don't know. Oh he'd have to bring it up now for, for complaining. So yeah. He's done it in the other end. He's keeping consistent on it. And he moting and he brings it up. Connor Kelly who's standing over this youngster tree to his name looking for number four just at the edge of the D it's a bit of pushing and shoving between Jack Byrne and Adam O'Halloran but Connor Kelly's still standing over this and Paula Flynn stands in front of him the hands up in the air we'll see where this goes so of course the wind is against Greg Cullen it is favouring now to Joe Mallon town end Connor Kelly stands up makes no mistake that's a sweet effort isn't it Right over the blue spot. Unbelievably accurate on these. So we're off again. Matthew Byrne gathers the ball. 8-1-3. to one, three. 36 and a half minutes gone. Niall Dunn's goal did level the game for Corto, but Greg Cullen have hit back with two scores. And Corto now with a short kick out. Adam Halloran, Mark Halloran and Matthew Byrne are combining and Matthew Byrne now comes out past the D. Looks for someone to give it to, but then he gives it to where number two is Robbie Flynn. Robbie Flynn back to, to Donnelly. Barry Donnelly wearing 24 to Rob Tyrrell. Now Tyrrell looking to get past halfway with Colin Wilson. But they have to check. They have to go back inside their own 65. And they've won a free. Soft free enough. Jack Byrne seems to give it away. And Colin Wilson gathers the ball. He's going to kick a left footed. And he's looking for options. He might come across the field. He does to Mark Halloran. Halloran has Robbie Flynn across here. And he gives now to him. So Courtwood trying to open up to play a bit. But it's very congested inside. There's quite a bunch inside 3v3 inside and there's not really many options Greg Cullen as we've already noted David they are quite defensive when, when they want to be and they, they are very tight in there but Marker Halloran the full back gives the kick pass inside there was a 2 on one situation it wasn't on and it wasn't on no but is, but is something could come of it here yet yeah Timmons hits the deck out to the number 13 Keane Dyle Keane Dyle to Niall Dunher Dunher oh he's fouled surely and he is and, and that's a good chance for Courtwood Fair as I was saying, Greg Cullen's defence was sturdy. They did give the ball away. Conditions don't help. But Court would have done well to win the ball back as well. Yeah, I think Niall actually nearly loses his foot in here a little bit more. Than, I think Trevor will be a bit disappointed with that. Ah, it's one of those. But yeah, it, was, it probably wasn't a ball. It was good. It was the right decision to kick in by Mark. But it worked out for them. Yeah, it had. And Niall Dunn is going to stand over this. I think the ball the, it has been brought in for descent as well. Uh, to make it more central to the goals. So fairness to John Flynn he has pulled both sides up on that he has been consistent and it's a score from Niall Dunn and uh, back, yeah, to back to one again back to one again they needed that you know they hadn't they hadn't pushed on it was they nearly awoke uh, Greg Cullen with the goal um, but they needed that score as you said it could have easily have been back to nearly three points down after scoring the goal so all to play for yeah Timmons won the kick out then he won a free after being tackled by Keane Dial and here's Daniel O'Reilly up to halfway now he's looking for options and he has an option through Aylesbury 
Ellsbury own that is and gives it to Shane O'Neill. Shane O'Neill now is inside the between the 45 and the 21 of the opposition. Heavy tackle by Barry Barry Donnelly and Ellsbury went to ground. Maybe in a case that the bigger man and the smaller man. It, it, exactly, that's exactly what it was. He actually, to be fair to him, I thought got good hands on the ball, um, but it was it was still high. Um, so it was one of those 50-50s. And I think it's going to be a card for Barry Donnelly as well here. He was named as number 18 on the programme, but he's wearing 24, and he does. He picks up the first yellow card of the game. So yeah, I do, definitely think the card is a bit harsh, but potentially maybe he has he has had a few of them, and but I don't think he had. But so Conor Kelly steps over this again. Four points from the man wearing number 13, and he'll, he'll kick this with his right. He's looking for. Point number five, just nearly 40 minutes on the clock. Up steps Kelly, right foot of effort from Conor Kelly, and it looks good again. Straight over the blue spot, and the umpire waves the white flag, and it's good score from Conor Kelly. Yeah, it's interesting to see Danny Ellsbury here. He's warming up on the sideline. He was he was named in the programme, but didn't start, and to be honest, I, I'd probably see him as a better fit out as a wing forward on Colin Wilson. Um, so it will be interesting to see, will he be introduced? Yeah, so Court would have won the kick out, won the kick out with a break, and... And it's a foul inside, but I just noticed Eddie Kinsler was telling Matthew Byron, the goalkeeper, to keep the ball out of the middle. He wanted to kick out onto the wings, and that's where that went. And they're able to win the break, and they've, they've won the free. I suppose he's looking for the ball to be gone down as high as possible down the field because they have that wind advantage. Yeah, and they have been winning. You know what I mean? They, obviously, the, the last one there two or three minutes ago, and then they went short with the last one. But they have, they have been winning the kickouts. They won a lot of clean kickouts in the first half over here. Now, so Keen Dial steps up, strike left-footed strike from from Keen Dial, and good score, and we're they're, they're just keeping with it nicely, aren't they? Yeah, that was a great score, and you know they've, they've had a number of few different lads kicking them, but with the breeze out of the hand, let it up, the ball will do the work. Yeah, so here we go, one one five to nine, forty-one minutes gone here in M W Higher Moor Park, and Greg Cullen are on the attack. Here comes Martin Dial. He passes the court with 45. It's a free in, and it's been a lot of fouls, David. Yeah, that was that was needless, definitely needless. And you know, Martin definitely would have been just looking to be offloading that. It wasn't as if it was it was somebody a corner forward stepping onto the right foot. So surprising that uh, the foul, Sean, it was a bit a bit silly. See Aaron Dorgan warming up as well for Greg Cullen, so he might see some action as well. Kevin Doog giving him some instructions before he sent him off to. To warm up, Conor Kelly now going to strike this outside the D and right for the effort from Kelly. It's going to drop short though to match the barn. He fumbles it but gathers the ball back again. They get away with it and the ball out to Colin Wilson. Colin Wilson now with a foot race to Shane O'Neill. Wilson has won it. Shane O'Neill fouled him. I think it was the correct decision. O'Neill was fouling, but he came in with it with a kind of a lunge at it as well. But we're back underway again. Wilson with a, a ball to Tyrrell. Tyrrell looks for options. Right footed. Ball over to the far side to the number 10, who's Paula Flynn. Flynn kicks it in high and top of Danny Luttrell and that's not what Eddie Kinsler will want No, he way overcooked it and that's just what I said before uh, there at half time you know that you don't you, you just play the ball a bit softer in with the breeze and don't be banging it in and he way overplayed that one um, and it just shows the strength of the breeze because Conor Kelly's free there like you know it really it really got caught up in the wind um, so Danny will probably be coming up if there's any more of them yeah, so Greg Cullen are back on the attack again. Aaron Dorgan is ready to come on, so we'll see who he replaces in a couple of moments. I imagine when the ball goes dead. Here comes Owen Aylesbury. Owen Aylesbury with a pass to Lee Walker. Walker back out to Aaron Forbes. Forbes has to recycle the ball back around because Court would have what they have back twelve players back in the yeah. back in defence and Martin Dial now. They've had to switch to play Greg Cullen to try and muster up something. Over here on the far side, free is Jack Byrne. He's over free and he's still looking for the ball over and they've won a free though. One or three, and just finding it hard to get inside that court with 45, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. The court with our man as well. Um, defensively, they're getting really well set up, so it seems like Danny is going to come up and hit this one. And here's Aaron Dorgan coming on. Yeah, Aaron Dorgan, where number 17 is going to come on. We'll see who he is going to replace. Shane O'Neill. So, it's yeah. on for Shane O'Neill. Yeah, 43 minutes gone is a huge, huge few minutes here. Uh, see, after this, only one in it. If Cordo would get level or sneak themselves a point ahead and really put it up mentally to, to Gray Cullen then and see where they're at. So 1-5 to nine, 9. Danny Bulger, two points to his name, stands over this again, facing into the breeze. 
right foot of strike from Bulger. It hangs in the air, and that's just good. To, it's going over the bar. What a score. Great score, great score. Danny Ellsbury seems to be getting ready to come on there as well. So, a bit of more pace and energy coming from the half-back lane, probably, when he comes on. So it extends the margin. Two in it. Craig Cullen looking to, to keep their good run going in the championship and unable to win that though and Jamie Sheen pulls down Niall Dunn and I think Eddie Kinsler is nearly out beside John Flynn looking for a card here at this stage we'll see what happens and it's a black card territory no 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 a yellow card and I think the black card is, is is well and gone out of football if you for anyone who was at our match yesterday anyway I don't think there's any there's such thing as a black card anymore as your young, uncle John used to say just play away. <laughs> that's it, that's it, yeah. It's a yellow card. It was a good foul out of Jamie. I know it's a yellow card, but it's one of those you call a good foul because Niall Dunn had went over his head, he got lucky on it. And now if Danny puts it over, you might say it's not a good foul, but they definitely had the break on them, so. Martin Dial departs the, the action as well, and it's Danny Aylesbury wearing number seven that replaces to him, so Martin Dial's day is done, 45 minutes for him, and... Court would now have a chance for free. Danny Luttrell stands over this wearing the number 20 jersey. Right foot of strike from Luttrell and it just goes out to the left. And just hasn't happened for them with them, has it? No, I just went to put too much into it and back to what I said. Probably Jamie will be happy enough with his yellow card now. It was the right decision. Give away that foul. Yeah. Court with number 15, Dylan Keane, has come into, into play. I don't know who he's... It's actually Colin Wilson. Yeah, Colin Wilson's departing. Yeah, so to Dylan Keane was the player that scored the last minute goal that booked their place in today's game. So Eddie Kinsler will be hoping for something similar, I'd imagine, again. Yeah, Colin did his did his job. He worked hard as a wing forward. If you're working hard enough for 45 minutes, generally in today's game, that is your job done. So Bulger with the kick out. Daniel O'Reilly and Taylor are battling in midfield for it, and Quarter are going to win the break. And to do through Barry Donnelly to Niall Dunn. Done now between the 45 and the 65, and he's looking for options. Looks up and he sees Sean O'Flynn. Now Danny Aylesbury's trying to size him up. O'Flynn with a right foot of strike inside, and, and you can from the Greg Ultras, you know the ball has gone wide, and it's <laughs> another wasteful opportunity. Yeah, I don't know whether he actually tried that or whether he was trying to cross, cross it across, and just skewed off his boot altogether. But to be fair to Courtwood, you know, in general on kickouts they've, they've been stronger, um, so they are two down with 14 minutes left, but. To, in my eyes, they should still be fancying themselves. Yeah, Bulger's looking for options. He doesn't have too many. He's going to have to go along with it. And he does out on top of Daniel O'Reilly. But there's plenty of court with players around Daniel O'Reilly. And O'Reilly done excellent to win that. And he sets off Lee Walker. Lee Walker with a pass to Forbes. Lee Walker's been well marshaled by Robbie Flynn. But Forbes now has got the better of Mark O'Halloran. Gets the better of Rob Tyrrell as well. Plenty of power and pace with Forbes with that. And he's trying to... Courtwood players are still around, plenty of Greg Cullen players, but Greg Cullen get it away. Why don't we just switch to play to do? Here comes O'Reilly. He has Owen Ailsby firm beside him, but it gives it in to Lee Walker. Walker's fouled, according to referee John Flynn. And soft one? Yeah, it's, it's one you'd be happy to hear the whistle blown if you were the forward. Which is definitely in the balance. In fairness to Courtwood, they have Marshall D. Walker pretty well. Yeah, yeah, he's he's been snuffed out big time, big time. And even Aaron Forbes, you know, that's that's one of his first balls really to, to win out in front. He, he done well on it. And actually, as I speak, it looks like he's they're bringing him off. Yeah, Paul Paul Mulready is going to come on for Aaron Forbes. Mulready's wearing number 20. Member of the Leash Minor Football panel that reached the Leinster final against Kildare in 2015 was Paul, Mul or Paul Mulready. Good, honest player. So, round of applause for Aaron Forbes. The great Cullen man makes his way over to the manager, Kevin Dew. Connor Kelly stands over this. He's just at the edge of the... <coughs> he's just at the top of the D here, and we see where he strikes it. He's going to be right-footed from Connor Kelly. He's made no mistake once again, and that's his sixth point to the game. Davey, and it's four from freeze. It's so yeah. important. Yeah, so important. And as I said there, uh, like... Cordwood had got on top around the middle uh, over the course of the game, and but Danny Riley came up with a, a great win there. He broke it in one of his own break, and as a result, they're now three ahead. Yeah, see, David Duffy has come onto the Cordwood team as well. We'll see who's replacing. Seems to be Danny, Danny Luttrell. Luttrell yeah. so. Wasn't his day from the place balls, and you know he probably starved a little bit of ball, but you have to make changes. Yeah, so 
Here comes Adam Halloran. He gets the kick pass from Matthew Byron under a little bit of pressure from Jack Byrne. The youngster working very well. And Mark Halloran gives the hand pass to Collins Ukuchuku. There's two great Cullen players trying to get the better of him, but he does well to Robbie Flynn. Flynn picked up by Sean McGrath. Flynn looking for Sean O'Flynn. Sean O'Flynn bursts, bursts through to the 45. And it's a free, and it is, and it's a chance. Probably another yellow card here, I'd say it as well. Yeah, it was the right decision to give away the foul there again, in my opinion. Um, so it'll be interesting to see now whether Keen Keen Dial can slot this. He scored one from a very, very similar position. I suppose we know Sean Games the Sean of Sean O'Flynn's game is about running. He hasn't been able to do that really, has he? No, and Danny has been tracking him at times and you know yourself. <laughs> Danny is Danny is a huge bundle of speed as well, so Sean had got in the loose there that time and a great score there from Keen Dial. Yeah, brilliant score from from Keen Dial. That's his second score of the game, so Back to two points. Back, back to two, two they're still within touch yeah. conditions, about a, what, ten and a half minutes or so remaining, not including stoppage time. Greg Cullen lead 11 to 1 6 here, and thankfully we've had no rain since just before the game, so hopefully it stays like that for the remaining games here in Moore Park this afternoon. Oh. Danny Bulger had a kick, kick out to Jamie Sheen. Jamie Sheen broke it down nicely for Sean McGrath. The cornerback, who's been quite impressive today, gives a pass to Lee Walker. Walker now looks up. Left foot a pass inside to Brian Byrne. Brian Byrne at the edge of the D. Takes it, and now he fouled, and referee says he has been. I plays advantage, though. Walker now with a right foot of effort from Walker. And the advantage is over, and Greg Cullen looking for a free. But I think if Brian Byrne had stopped, he would have got the free. Yes, it was one of those. If I'm out in the field and the referee is the hand up for advantage, I just call <laughs> no advantage and ask for the free. It was one of those that it would have been better off if he had to have the whistle blown. Yeah, Byrne goes along with the kick out over on the terrace side, but it's going to be a great colour man that wins it, and that man is Luke Aylesbury. Gathers up to pieces just on the 45 of his own 45. Aaron Dorgan's first touch I make it of the game. Links up with a 1 2 with Timmons. Back through midfield now is Dorgan. Gives the pass inside. Pass inside to Connor Kelly. Connor Hogan got a boot too and is out over the sideline. Important boot by Connor Kelly because he could have been under better pressure. If, sorry, by Connor Hogan yeah. if Connor Kelly got yeah, the ball. If he had to, yeah, Connor Hogan went for it strong. And if, if, if he had to miss it, Kelly would have had him slipped along the end line. Yeah, Danny Aylesbury has tried a, a pass across the field and luckily the, held up in the wind. And Jamie Sheen now is able to gather it here in front of the great colour management. Sheen, Niall Donner now is, is tracking Sheen, but. Gives the ball to Aylesbury, Luke Aylesbury, wearing the five, but he's intercepted, intercepted by Niall Dunn. Niall Dunn is a long way away from, from where he really would want to be, but he's big and strong, and now he's up to the 45. Full two taking on, two on Sean McGrath, now. looking back for options. Going a right foot of effort from Niall Dunn, and oh, I think there was way, way better options than that. Yeah, he, at first when he, when he looked up when he had the ball, it was three on two inside, but the sweeper actually came out to him, which I thought was a little bit silly, to be honest. And But once the sweeper came out to him, then it was actually two on two inside, and there was that opportunity to just even a hand pass, even just a hand pass, pop it into the corner and let the man add it in the corner. But yeah, seeing Rob Taylor put his hands, wonder what that was about. was another wide. That's their 11th wide of the game, 11-7 in the wide counting. That's where Courtwood are leading, but unfortunately for them, they're not leading on the scoreboard. Big kick out from Bulger, out towards the middle. Courtwood win a dodge, who Barry Donnelly's won the break. Gives it to Tyr. Tyr looks for the hand pass. That hand pass is to Paul O'Flynn. Paul O'Flynn runs into a bit of trouble with Aaron Dorgan, but O'Flynn wins the ball back again. Right foot of effort from Paul O'Flynn. Where's it going to go? And that's, that's another wasteful opportunity. But I think it's a free, is it? No, oh, 45. 45. 45. For free centres. Uh, someone got a hand to it. Yeah, and it's as you said there, it's interesting. You said it's a 11-7 on the wide count um, with Cordwood having the most of it. If you look at the scoreboard, it's 11 scores to 7 scores, the opposite way around. So they've both had the 18, and it's just that Craig Cullen have utilised it that little bit better. So Matthew Byron is coming up now to hit, hit this place ball with Danny gone off. So his opposite number, Danny Bulger, has, has scored three so far today. So Matthew Byron will be looking to get himself off the mark. We'll see whether he will. Yeah, these are a big few minutes. This is a big, big kick. Back to one point with the breeze. Up steps. Matthew Byron looks good. I can hear the roar of approval, and it's a good score from Matthew Byron. His first of the day, and game on again, Davy. Yeah, the ultras went quite so. We knew it was over the bar. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's really in the melting pot now, and as I say, like when I look out and where Danny is coming from, looking out. To be honest, on this, it's a, it's a, it's a break. I see Courtwood winning most of these kickouts. Yeah, so Bulger's looking for options, not much option. He has to go along 
out to Paul Mulready. Mulready though was beaten by Sean O'Flynn and here comes Dylan Keane back to Sean O'Flynn. Quarter run the match up to the D. Sean O'Flynn with a right foot of strike and we're level. That's it, yeah. He's, like Danny went to put that ball to the eye of a needle but he felt he needed to because there isn't that there isn't that much options to be honest and to be fair, you know, it's, it's, hard, to, it's hard to look past Courtwood from here to be honest with the way the kickouts are going. Yeah, Courtwood of course have the aid of, of the breeze as well so we'll see how it goes Bulger's looking for options he doesn't really have many options he's going to have to go along again goes out over the, or across to the terrace but David Duffy Duffy's there to win that plucks it from the air here comes Rob Robbie Tear Court now out to Dylan Keane Dylan Keane right foot of effort from Keane the goal scorer the last time where has it gone it's gone over the bar what a score from Dylan Keane great score great score and you know, as I said, they don't have too many options, but I just don't understand that Jamie Sheen was in 35 yards out looking for the ball short there off that kick out. You know, like he's definitely one of the men that they need out if they are going to win a long kick out. But to me, in my opinion, they should be they should be looking to try and jab a ball short. The Ellsbury should leave space in front of themselves and running into that space. They all have the legs, should have the legs on their men to, to go short for a ball and work it out that way because they're definitely struggling. With the long ball. Yeah, we we'll see. Dylan Keane is getting some run and repairs by the physio. He was hit late after he kicked a fantastic score. And, and only firm though actually wouldn't be in today's game because he scored a last minute goal to, to beat Rose and Alice. So. Yeah, it's a great score. Like, you know, when you're, when you're coming on the field and you, like he literally only had the, the second there to kick it. He, the, the pressure was coming in. He was going to be blocked. Um, and he just got it off. Did very well. Yeah, As you see, up. Gray Cullen are bunching the kick out and they're probably going to try and break the space. But Cord would have stood off them that little bit and they're, they're trying to play a little bit zonal. Oh, so Bulger goes long. Looks for Trevor. Trevor Collins is around there, but Tyrrell, Tyrrell wins it and Tyrrell had a height advantage. Gives to the Sean O'Flynn. Sean O'Flynn tracked by Mark Timmons. Trevor Flynn now is through to the 21. Here comes Niall Dunn. Chance, goal, chance. Oh! Struck the post, Second I think. Has, off the was post. it saved or struck the post? No, the post, yeah. Post yeah, again. Yeah. Back out, back out to David Duffy. David Duffy back out to Niall Dunher. Dunher a left footed effort from Niall Dunher. Yes. Looks good, looks good. What oh, Niall Dunher. What a score. You'd say, a lot, a lot of people would say, why is somebody going with the outside of the boot from there? But that would be only people that don't know Niall Dunher. <laughs> okay. We can see it on the replay. What a, what a goal chance. <laughs> yeah, it's probably one of those, to be honest, I'd be saying put it over the bar, get yourself two points ahead. Um, maybe I don't go for enough of goals myself, but. Jeez, Niall Donoghue there, that's an exceptional kick, but well within his locker. Yeah, 56 minutes gone. Court would lead 1-10 to 11. They've turned this game right on his head. Yeah. Eddie Kinster will be delighted with his charges. They've really, yeah. they've really, really turned it in the last 10 minutes or so. They have a yellow card now as well. That's Keane Dyle. Yeah, Greg Cullen went with short kick out there. They just know they're not winning it out long, so they had to go short with it. They got it off and they got the quick free, so... Yeah, so what they need to get it up because they are dangerous if they can get it up but they haven't been able to get it up there no Danny Ellsbury now he falls to the ground tackled by Niall Dunn Niall Dunn tackling aggressively over the her side Sean McGrath had it and he gives it back to Ellsbury so here comes Timmons Greg Cudder lucky enough to stay with possession but it's a four oh, done him for over carrying over carrying says referee John Flint Mark Timmons is not happy with it and, but in, in fairness to in fairness to referee Greg Cullen got themselves in a bit of a hole. They were very tight passing and put themselves into that position. Yeah, there was absolutely no need. They, they all kind of just meandered up the field together and, and, and nearly blocking up their own space. David Duffy now on the ball. Up into the opposition, 45, looking for runners. Sean O'Flynn did make the runner, but David Duffy has to go back and they have to recycle possession. Niall Dunner, that's the man you want on the ball coming up to the end of the game as well. Rob Tyrrell. Rob Tyrrell now trying to hold back playing. We're trying to keep that possession, I'd imagine. Mark O'Halloran to Collins and Collins back to Robbie Flynn. Robbie Flynn to Barry Donnelly back to, <laughs> to Robbie Flynn. <laughs> and Courtwood are, are not going to waste time if they can, but now maybe they've lost possession, have they? We'll see a bit of a rook and it's a hot ball. They're playing yeah. a dangerous game, are they, Davy? Yeah, well, like, you know, sometimes that's fine, but when Rob Turrell came back, I was happy enough with it. But when Mark O'Halloran had it, he definitely should have come wide here to Paulo Flynn. Paulo Flynn had the ball, and we've seen Cordwood's forwards. They are moving well, and they're on top, so, like, they're they're only dying for the ball to go in. It's, it's still it's still well in the melting pot. You don't need to be going yeah. messing around with it this early. Two minutes of normal time. Greg Cullen won the throw, and here comes Trevor Collins. Poor ball from Collins into Lee Walker. Didn't really Great give hand him. by Rob Flynn. Yeah, absolutely. The ball in wasn't the best either. It gave Lee Walker an awful lot of time to do. Greg Cullen had given away a free. Here's Niall Dunner. The quarter that got the ball underway quickly. Dunner with 
one of his passes up across up to the top to Niall Dunn. Niall Dunn now with a quick ball inside. Let's we'll see what Corfer can do with this. Here comes Dylan Keane. Looks onto his right again, Dylan Keane. Looks for his right. Oh, what a score. What a score. Exactly. That's why that's why the forwards want the ball. They're on top. They're on top. Two great balls. Great ball down the line by Niall Donner and a great ball inside and a great finish. But Robbie Flynn, superb hand. If he's in close in the tackle at all, he's a master at it. Yeah, we're looking at favourites for the championship. You would have said St. Joseph's and Greg Cullen were up there as the top four and two of them could be hitting the deck. If the like way Eddie things Kinsley are going. Hitting the deck here. Yeah, Eddie Kinsley's after hitting the deck as well. I'm not sure he might have been saying a bit of a prayer, but He's Greg Cullen have for a free. His men to work back. He's asking for his men to give absolutely everything they have. We could have wild celebrations. I don't think Courtwood will stay off the field if they can pull this off. Greg Cullen have had to go back, back to Mark Timmons. Had to go back nearly half back, halfway back to field to Mark Timmons. And here comes Danny Aylesbury. Aylesbury now inside the opposition 45. Gives it to another Aylesbury and cross to Trevor Collins. Collins now gives the pass inside. Oh, to Daniel O'Reilly. It has opened up a little bit. What can Greg do? Pass inside. Goal chance. Is there a goal chance inside? And oh, it's gone out wide. Yeah, I just, you know what I mean? Like, I know there's only 30 seconds in normal time, but, like, it's three points and it's going to be very choked up. T- to me, to me, that was that was the ball that Danny should have been putting over the bar. Yeah, so, three minutes of additional time. We've just heard it announced here in the Moore Park. So, court would lead, one eleven to 11. Yeah, from here now, to be honest, by the time this is kicked out, there'll be only two and a half minutes and they're probably going to have to start looking at just the goal because there's three in it. But in that situation, if Danny put that over, two in it, there was still plenty of time. So Matthew Byron goes long with it and goes down to the top of Niall Dunn. Niall Dunn looking to win it and he's won a free as well and that's playing right into Courtwood's hands mm. and you'd imagine they'd be happy enough with this. In fairness to them, Davey, they've they kept in the entire game and they've battled really hard and fully deserved here. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And as I said, you know what I mean, it was place balls was their only reason that they were behind in the first half. So as, re- as regards actually playing the football, they've definitely played it. Obviously the goal gave the braided life into them at the start of the second half, but... They're fully deserving of this, that's for sure. Yeah, a bit of talking between Kevin Doog and Eddie Kinsler on the sideline. Kevin Doog not happy Eddie Kinsler was in on, on the field, but Matthew Byron going short, he looked to go short, now he's going to have to, gonna have to do something different with it now. Kicks it long, kicks it straight down on top of the house. Where's it going to go? It's going to go short though. Greg Cullen ready to pick it up through Mark Timmons. Timmons with a kick pass across out to Aylesbury. Danny Aylesbury came on as a sub. What name to start with? Only came on as a sub to Aaron Dorgan. He's been quite enough since he came in, but now he has the ball and gives it up. Krupp looking for a score to Paul Mulready. Mulready to Dorgan. Dorgan Dar- Dar- is held back and Quarter just trying to run down the clock that bit more. It's one of those to us. It's a great foul. It's one of those. So... We'll yeah. see now. They're probably going to have to try and choke this in their own house. The mad thing is here, they definitely should... Like, if you kick a dead ball here into the square, you can't go into the square. So he definitely should shift this left um, for it then to be kicked into the square because everyone is allowed into the square then. Should never play a placed ball straight into the square. So it's, it's, I think it's Aaron Dorgan that's going to, yeah, going to take going to chip it. it into the square, is, which is got, silly. He's not taking your advice. No. So here we go, he's chipped it into the square. Where's it going to go? It's in around the house. And yeah. There we go, square ball, free out. Well, it was gone wide anyway, but... Minute or so of, nor- of the injury time to go. Matthew Byron kicks it short to Mark O'Halloran. O'Halloran now looking for options. He has Adam O'Halloran, and he goes through the middle. Court will not want to give away a possession. Rob Flynn to yeah. Mark O'Halloran. O'Halloran tackled, and he's won a free as well. And They're just doing enough, they're just doing enough to... To hold off that Greg Cullen surge that Greg Cullen are trying to get, but Niall Dunn or Niall Dunn are on, on the ball now and he won't want to give it away cheaply. Looking for options, looking to go down the field and he does. He has the option in Sean O'Flynn. Oh, how did Sean O'Flynn get free there? Yeah, he did. Niall Dunn her way to firm and the one are free as well. Matthew Werner will come up here and he'll take 30 seconds and they might not even have an opportunity after this even to get it back yeah. up the field. I'm told it's 1970s or so since Courtwood were last in a in a, in a semi-final at this level, so we'll um, I'm not Niall sure Dunn. on the history books there, but they're they're well underway, and I think there's going to. Uh, Niall, a Dunn is, a Niall Dunn is on the ground here, and there's yeah. a few Greg lads. There's a bit of afters, Greg Cullen. Yeah, and Greg don't need this, and I don't know why they're getting involved. Oh. I know it's just frustration, but Niall Dunn is down. Physio is trying to attend to Niall Dunn, and it's getting difficult. There's Cooney, the linesman's in there, the referees in there as well. I doubt anybody's seen anything. I didn't see it anyway, but 
Matthew Byron here is an opportunity to send him straight into the semi-final. Whether he plays any more time after, there definitely won't be time for two scores. Yeah. We I, spoke I just him. before we went on air, they need to push on to the next level, and they're just about to do that. Absolutely. When they came up first from intermediate, they were a breath of fresh air. They were absolutely flying. Had the injuries then, you know, that year they nearly got relegated. That they relegated us, and... Since that, uh, you know, they're, they're, they've been coming with this huge football and talent in, in Courtwood. And, you know, the way they've won, Rob Turrell was obviously a huge advantage, a huge asset to them uh, to win kickouts. So Matthew Byron stands over this. We apologise for that. PA announcement about Matthew Byron strokes it in at the top of the square and it's gone. It's gone to the right and wide. I don't think Delmatter matter. It's nearly as good as a score at this stage. And Danny Bulger yeah. now is looking to kick it out for four minutes, four and a half. Not much time. Should, I think they still should press the kick out though because they've been winning it. That's it. There it is. History for Courtwood. They've joined Port Leash and they've joined Odemsey's. Their neighbours Odemsey's into the senior football championship semi-final. And what an achievement, Davy. Absolutely, and fully, fully deserving of it. You know, the, like. We apologise for that. The PA announcements were just creating a bit of noise here in the Moore Park. So. There's a pair of sunglasses missing tomorrow, so I don't need to lead them today. We're ringing them for. <laughs> but just on court, what if what an achievement? Absolutely, yeah. No, like they were fully deserving of it. As I said, I, I, from Danny Bulger's point of view, I didn't know where he was going to get his kickouts off. They only went short with one of them, and Gordwood absolutely dominated in in midfield. And you know that's that's primary possession, and you can't do much if you don't have primary possession. Yeah. For Greg Cullen, back to the drawing board again. You know that that wait for that senior for that senior championship that they've been longed for since so many years. It goes on again. Yeah, that's going to really, really hurt. That's going to really, really hurt. Um, you know, as Kevin Doog obviously had that article during the week, it probably bred a little bit of fire into Courtwood. Um, it's that five-week break as well. You know, I don't know if it's ever ideal um, for teams to, to have that five-week five, five week absence because of uh, when you get straight through and you have the electric picnic the extra week, then it's a long break. And you know, they, they just didn't, they didn't, they didn't get, they didn't get into it today. In my opinion, you know, like it was, it was, it was the freeze had them, had them ahead in the first half. It wasn't that it was exceptional football, um, and Court would really shut them down in the second half. And as I say, won so much primary possession. Greg just couldn't, couldn't get their hands on the ball. Kept, kept them in the game as well. It's like what MCs and Joseph's last night. Longer what MCs stayed in the game. They got a goal. And then they went on and won it. And, you know, if you keep a team in the game, that's what's, that's the chances of something happening like that. Absolutely, yeah. And it was, you know, they're, as I said, fully, fully deserving of it. You know, they, um, and it, like it was, it was, it was widespread. All the different players, Niall Dunn really stood up to me in the second half, won some superb kickouts. Um, and, you know, finished a few great scores there as well. But, you know, it was a real team effort um, right from right from um, in goals. And, you know, Robbie Flynn, I said he got a hand in. You know, we, we think about uh, Niall Donner's great score, but that was Robbie Flynn turned over a ball when there was a point in it, turned over a super ball 30 yards out from their own goal, go down two ahead. You know, they're just as important as the finisher. Yeah, I think the final furlong will be hopping tonight, Dave. It'll be, it'll be a good place to be. But that's it from us. That's our coverage of, of this game. As I said, if you've already bought this game, you, you now are entitled to watch the next game between Port Arrington and Ballerone. All you need to do is use the same password when you are going to click the link for, for the second game. So that's it from the first game. It's Greg Cullen. They're waiting for another Lee Senior Football Championship goes on. While Courtwood, the men from Bally Bridges, march into the Senior Football Championship semi-finals where they will join Port Leash and Odemsey's. <laughs>